For quite a while now, whenever I review an NVIDIA GPU, I will state right at the start of the video how fast the graphics card was in terms of core clock speed and memory clock speed. And for quite a while now, those numbers have really never been correct representations of how fast the card ran, even when it wasn't overclocked. What's to blame? GPU boost. The Logitech G303 features a lightweight design, an advanced optical sensor with Delta Zero technology for precise tracking and RGB lighting to match your setup. Click now to learn more. Now, NVIDIA claims that their GPU Boost 2.0 technology extracts every ounce of computing power from compatible NVIDIA graphics cards, which results in a maximizing of frame rates in each and every game, DM, and that GPU Boost 2.0 is faster and more flexible than 1.0, giving users more control over its configuration. That's what NVIDIA claims. So, okay, but what does all that actually mean? Well, the whole idea of GPU Boost is for it to be an overclocking assistant. What we'll be exploring today is the effects that it has on your graphics card when you do nothing at all. Um, but it does change things if you happen to tweak settings, especially voltage and thermal limit and power limit, stuff like that. But that's a long story as well, and we may explore that later in a future video if you guys are interested, so hit the like button to let me know. GPU Boost increases these things automatically by detecting if an application would be able to properly utilize additional graphics performance. Then, as long as you have the additional headroom in both thermal output and power draw, uh, you're going to be good to go for GPUs to kind of do its thing, attempting to increase your various clock speeds in order to give you the additional performance you can use without any intervention, intervention from you. Now you're probably thinking the effects of this must be quite small and insignificant with graphics cards being advertised all over the place with their base and boost clock speeds. Isn't the boost clock speed as advertised just what the GPU is going to boost to anyways? Well, kind of, but also totally not at all. You'd never expect a manufacturer, or for that matter, a retailer, to undersell their product. But what's kind of exactly happening here is that they're doing just that. The Gigabyte G1 Gaming 980 Ti that I reviewed a while back, you can check the video up here, it had an advertised base clock speed of 1190 with an additional advertised boost clock speed of 101 more than that, which was 1291. Now, why do I find this super interesting? Well, for a few reasons, to be honest. Reason one is that you'll never really see that base clock speed anyways. Essentially, any game will cause GPU boost to kick in, so whatever. Next up is that super specific boost clock of 1291. With a number that specific, you'd expect it to be exactly 1291. But as we discovered in that video, it was a massive increase of 79 megahertz to an actual final boost clock speed of 1370. So why not advertise 1370? Did they not know it would be this fast? Or much more likely than that, were they making a conservative guess? And this is where our testing began. I needed a ton of the same GPU that all had GPU 2.0 technology, and that's not exactly a cheap proposition to make. Luckily, NVIDIA was already sending us six freaking Titan X cards, only four featured here. Um, they sent it our way so that we could do system upgrades for the editors, and I took the opportunity to both build the compensator system, the build, of log, the build log of which you can see here, and do my testing for GPU boost. The results were kind of awesome, to be honest. Each card has its average range of core clock speeds that it would move between. The first interesting observation here is that the lowest fluctuation on the lowest boosting card was still 13 megahertz faster than the advertised boost clock speed of a Titan X from Nvidia. These are all reference cards. The second observation is that the highest of the average fluctuations was 54 megahertz above the advertised, even with every single Titan X hitting a thermal wall of 83 degrees under load. In conclusion, I personally think that was damn interesting, but it was a little bit disappointing that we ran into the exact same thermal wall on 
every single car due to the high heat producing Titan X and a reference cooler. We could have increased our thermal limit, but I wanted to see what these cars would do without any changes happening to them. And honestly, I'm not a huge fan of running cards that hot anyways, so no major loss there. It was also interesting that the maximum clock speed of 1139 was hit by four out of the six cards. For stage two, if you guys are interested and I can get different cards, I'd like to try this again, but with better cooled cards, maybe some aftermarket coolers and stuff. But playing with some overclocking settings would be fun as well. I'd like to explore the idea of hard-coded maximums. What settings changes produce the biggest results automatically from GPU boost and GPU boost overclocking versus manual overclocking. So don't forget to hit that like button if you're interested so I can try to acquire those additional cards. Speaking of stuff and things, Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club is a great way to get razors and other various bathroom supplies shipped directly to your door for only a few bucks a month. The razors are high quality and we have a ton of community members, men and women alike, who use them every day and love the smooth shave that they get, no matter how thick or coarse their facial hair may be. For some reason, this comes to a shock to many people, but yes, even though I have facial hair, I do shave and I would have a pretty beastly neck beard if I did not. I definitely say that the shave I get from Dollar Shave Club's razors is pretty damn nice. On top of their razors, they also have Dr. Carver's shave butter, which goes on smooth and clear so you can see what you're doing, and their peppermint scented butt wipes for men, for those of you out there in North America who can't get to a bidet. So check out everything they have to offer at dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus Tech Tips. Thank you for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our Amazon affiliate code to shop at Amazon. Buying a cool t-shirt like this one or with a direct monthly contribution through the community forum. Now that you're done doing all of that stuff, you're probably wondering what you should watch. So click here, this little button here in the top right hand corner to see our most viewed video ever, which has nothing to do with technology. Well, computer technology, I guess. I'm gonna leave it.